dear scholars and learners of english welcome back to my channel english lingua franca in my previous video i had explained the three stanzas first second and third of character of a happy life composed by sir henry wotton and now in this video i am going to explain the fourth stanza first of all and thereafter i'll explain the next stanzas the fourth stanza of the poem character of happy life is Who's who envies none whom chance doth raise, nor wise who never understood how deepest wounds are given with praise, nor rules of state but rules of good. Who envies none whom chance doth raise, nor wise? Here. the poet sir henry wotton says that a truly happy man is not envious or jealous of the lot of those people who have achieved eminence or greatness in their lives by sheer chance or by unfair or wicked means not by their merit and hard work he does not have jealousy for great people important people who have achieved greatness and eminence by sheer chance or by unfair and wicked means but not by dint of their merit and hard work who never understood how deepest wounds are given with praise who never understood how deepest wounds are given with praise this world is full of deceitful people who stab a person in the back although in his face they may praise sky high but the happy man is not that sort of man he is straight forward frank and plain in his dealings he doesn't know the art of praising the persons and causing a great harm to them he doesn't know this art as so many people of this world deceitful people of this world know how to cause great harm to a person by praising them sky high and causing great harm to them so the poet says who never understood how deepest wounds are given with praise
in the next line the poet says nor rules of state but rules of good nor rules of state a truly happy man does not care for the rules formed by autocratic governments the rules which are not interest not in the interest of the people not in the interest of the citizens of the country he observes but rules of good he observes only those rules that are based on goodness and righteousness and he follows those rules observes those rules which are to promote the well being of mankind the rules which promote the well being of mankind and they are based on goodness and righteousness he never cares for those rules other rules formed by autocratic government he observes only those rules which are formed in the interest of the citizens of the country the rules that are based on the goodness and righteousness and promote the well being of mankind in the next stanza the poet says who god god doth late and early pray more of his grace than gifts to lend who entertains the harmless day with a well chosen book or friend who god doth late and early pray a truly happy man is a god fearing person he is highly grateful to god and offers prayers to god for his mercy for his grace more than the gifts he has given to him a truly happy man is grateful to god and offers his prayers to god not for the things not for the gifts god has given to him but he prays to god or he is grateful to god for his mercy and grace he never prays to god for the things or gifts he never prays to god asking the worldly things but he prays to god offers prayers to god that god is merciful god is gracious that is why he offers prayers to god he never prayers pray he never prays to god for worldly things who entertains the harmless day with a well chosen book or friend a truly happy man makes the best use of his time in the company of a good book or a good friend he utilizes his time he makes the best use of his time by having association 
be the good friend or by reading a good book in the next stanza the poet says this man is free from servile bands or hope to rise or fear to fall lord of himself do not of lands and having nothing he hath all here the poet says in this stanza a truly happy man never cares for ups and downs in his life he never hopes to make progress nor does he fear the decline in his life so he never cares for ups and downs in his life he treats the both in the same way he never hopes to make progress nor does he fear the decline in his life lord of himself though not of lands lord of himself though not of lands a truly happy man may not possess any state or the worldly things worldly wealth he may not have worldly position or positions but he is lord of himself means it means he has control over his emotions and burning desires strong desires emotions like anger sorrow happiness and he has control over his burning desires lust bad desires desires to do evil things evil pieces of work he has control over his bad desires evil desires desires to do evil piece of work and he has control over his emotions like anger sorrows happiness he has control over his emotions in this way he is lord of himself he may not possess any state or worldly things and having nothing he hath all a truly happy man has may not have anything may not have worldly things may not have palatial buildings bungalows cars but he has contentment satisfaction that is above any kind of wealth in this world if a man feels satisfied with what he has is happier than any person in this world he is happier than that person who has bungalows cars palatial buildings and other worldly things but if they are not happy the things they have are useless a truly happy man has contentment he is man of contentment man of satisfaction but he does not have any state or worldly things a lot of wealth a great property but he has contentment that is above 
any kind of wealth. Contentment is more valuable than any kind of wealth. So in this way I have explained the remaining three stages. The fourth, fifth and sixth. In this way I have explained all the six stages of the poem character of a happy life. First, first stanza, second stanza, third stanza, fourth stanza, fifth stanza and sixth stanza. In my previous video, I have explained the first, second and third stanzas. And in, the, in this video, I have explained the fourth one, fifth one and sixth one. In the line, and having nothing he hath all, in the last stanza, in the line and having nothing he hath all, the poet has used the figure of his speech oxymoron. Because here he has two contradictory ideas combined and put together in the sentence. He has expressed two contradictory ideas combined together in this sentence. The poet says, a truly happy man has nothing but he has everything. By saying this, he expresses two contradictory ideas and on this basis, it can be said that the poet has used the figure of his speech, oxymoron in the line and having nothing he had all. Thank you very much.